more people to. Uh, how's everyone doing? Yeah, so it's a bit chilly uh, in Joburg. Um, that's why you see me dressed like this. Uh, we'll just wait for a few more people to join. Uh, so maybe in the meantime, um, I'm just going to share some resources uh, that we'll be using today um, on the chat. Uh, so, okay, let me share my screen as well while we're at it. Yeah, so today is about uh, Django. Um, how many people have used Django before? Uh, you can you can speak up or you can um, type in the chat uh, to let us know if you've used it before. Okay, Michael, Rafa, not yet. Okay. Anybody else? I think Ma if Martin is, is he on? I think he's used it. I think I had a question. Um, about Django um, in the in the session after the setup. Okay, so I'm going to share some resources so you can see my screen. Uh, so we have this one. If you, I mean, you can clone it, um, but you don't need to. Uh, because we'll be building from scratch. Uh, so that's the, <clears throat> that's the GitHub repo for, for this book. Uh, so we have a nice book here. It's called uh, Django by Example, a third edition. Uh, it's, it's quite long. Uh, it's a few chapters, well, more than a few chapters, uh, maybe 10, 12 chapters. And uh, what it does it is it shows you sort of different scenarios that you can um, where you can apply Django. So it's project based. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So this is the book and the the supplemental content, which is this, which is what I've already shared here. Um, so we're just going to look at the basics, uh, which is um, this chapter one only. Okay. Um, yeah, so which is here. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm going to, well, we'll go through, through this chapter, just implementing things bit by bit. It would be great if, if you could follow. Uh, it's really not hard. Um, you know, there's a few commands that you have to run, but it's, it's actually very simple. So it would be great if you follow. So that by the, by the end of the tutorial, you'd have something like, like this. You actually have your your chapter one basically, 
right? Which is this. And then you can build on top of that, uh, you know, for, for more advanced uh, features, etc. So it'd be great if, if you guys can follow. Uh, let me see if we have more people who are joining. Okay. Uh, if can 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 someone let um, the other uh, trainees know that uh, there's a class? Because I think this class was shared late uh, yesterday, so people may not know that um, it's actually in session. That there is a class uh, right now. So if someone could let uh, the other trainees know uh, on Slack that uh, there's a session that's going on. Um, yeah, Michael, <laughs> I I wish I could uh, share the book, but maybe the best thing I can do is this, uh, and I'll tell you why I can't share the book. Uh, okay, so purchase book, yeah. So you can purchase it from uh, from Pact uh, Publishing. Uh, you can purchase it from here. And I think uh, they also have it on Amazon.com uh, where you can purchase it. So the reason why I can't share it is because I am I'm using this book from this platform, right? This O'Reilly Learning Platform. It's a subscription platform, right? So yeah. So I'm not sure that uh, I may have to check uh, the you know, copyright infringement rules and, and stuff like that. Uh, perhaps, you know, maybe I could share one chapter. It's possible. Uh, some some books do uh, allow that, that you can share a chapter, not the whole book. Uh, but let me find out first, um, yeah, before I get into trouble, right? Uh, but the, the code, all of the code um, that this book goes through is, is in this GitHub repo. So the code is, is open source. Uh, anyone can can access it. I think yeah, you see here, it's public, right? So the code is is, is open source. Anyone can use it. I, but the book itself, I'm really not sure. All right? Okay, let me see who else has joined. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't think many people are going to be joining. I think someone did let other did someone. Yeah. Okay. So Rafa, thank you. Yeah, I think people were notified late, so yeah, I think that's the that's the problem. But anyway, um, so okay, that's this is one resource, right? Which is the GitHub repo. The other resource uh, that I have here uh, is this one. It's the actual the official uh, Django uh, documentation, which is that. It's actually also very good. It's very detailed. Um, so you could also, but not not currently. For for this tutorial, we'll use uh, chapter one of uh, Django three by example. But uh, for further reading and learning, uh, you could use uh, this this site, which is the documentation site for Django. And we'll be using, as you'll see here, we'll be using Django three point zero. Uh, I believe there is a new version, which is four point zero, right? Um, yeah. I, I don't know what breaks and who, you know, what works. So let's just stick to three, uh, because if we use four, uh, you know, some things could go wrong. So the book is, is using three and let's use three, uh, but you are free uh, later on to see what uh, what's actually, they do normally publish, uh, they explain what's new. Uh, Yeah, normally there will be a page where they tell you what's, what's different between uh, Django 3 and Django 4. Uh, yeah, you, uh, maybe if, when I find it later, I can share it. Uh, but for now, so you can expect many sites to have been built, uh, you know, with Django 3, uh, because Django 3 should be quite recent, right? So, yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So we'll use this, I think. Um, just let me know if you've cloned the repo, but really you don't need to. Um, we can just go through uh, through this documentation. Um, I'll just skip most of these things uh, to the part that, you know, is, is necessary, most probably where we have to implement code. And, you know, I'll explain uh, the rest of, you know, 
what what what's happening okay so maybe uh, if you remember so this whole week uh, <clears throat> so this whole week was really i think most of it has been about web development uh if you see you know so on okay so on, on monday we talked about blockchain concepts and web3 then we talked about uh, pytest and pytil right and then we talked about okay, what is integration and i think here yeah, there was also talk about uh, design thinking and ux design and yesterday there was two tutorials one on you know how to build a, a web app uh, with an end design and a, and a React front end. And then again, yesterday, later on, it was uh, how to build a web app with, with a strappy back end, right? So the question would be, you know, why do we need another tutorial on web development when we have all these tutorials, right? Um, so the, the way I can answer that question, uh, see this game. Um, answering my own question. The way I can answer that question is to say that <clears throat> if you can see here, right, you have a like a front end, uh, you know, part which is you know React, and then you have a back end a part uh, which you know is strapping, right? And I think um, yeah, I think Flask was mentioned here, right? Uh, you know, to to use Flask uh, with strapping, which is also you know part of of, of the back end, which is the API uh, part. Um, so I, I would say that, you know, Django is, um, you, you want to contrast it with, uh, Flask, right? Which is a web framework as well. Um, uh, which is, it's part of what they call, uh, the micro, uh, micro frameworks, right? Micro web frameworks, because, um, Django really, uh, it sort of, it comes with everything, right? Uh, I wish I could show everything that Django comes with. Uh, yeah, but basically Django comes with everything, right? It comes with uh, the templating engine. Uh, it comes with, um, what do you call it? Uh, the model, it comes with, you know, what they call the ORM, the object relational model. Uh, so, you know, it's everything, right? But with Flask, uh, Flask comes with three things, right? Uh, I think it's Jinja, which is the templating engine. And then you have, uh, I think, Whiskey or Gunicon, which is like the uh, the web server and what else? And there's this, there's a third thing, uh, which I couldn't remember now, right? So that's really what Flask is about, <clears throat> right? Um, let's see if we can see those things. Uh, so they will tell you, uh, there's three things that Flask comes with. Okay, so yeah, so here we are, right? So it depends on the Ginger template engine and the Velk Zug uh, Whiskey Toolkit, right? So those are the two main main parts of, of Flask. And okay, so yeah, but then now uh, the question would be now, you know, is that, is that sufficient, right? Is that sufficient to, to run a a production uh, web, website or web server, right? And the answer would be no, it's not, right? Uh, but, you know, in the in the field of microservices, right, you want to sort of decouple you, the parts of, of, your, uh, of your web server so that, you know, uh, you know, like you, you can change, make changes uh, separately, right? Like they were showing you yesterday um, that, you know, you could, you build, you build your, your back end separately, and then you build your front end separately. And then now what you could do is make requests from your front end to grab data from the back end, right? Django is, is the other way around, right? It's integrated, right? So everything in Django, you've got your back end and you've got your front end all together in the same, <coughs> in the same application, right? Uh, so I hope that makes sense. And then there's things like, for example, uh, things like authentication, right? Uh, you'll see that, you know, Flask doesn't come with authentication. You probably have to install it uh, as as a, as a, an extension. Or what, I don't know what they call it. I think it's like an extension or a plugin or whatever they, they call it, which is on, you know, which now only offers the authentication. 
And if there's other things that you want to integrate, you install that as, as extra packages. Um, this, it should be here somewhere where they actually explain that, but I hope that makes sense. So plus comes with, you know, the essentials, and then you have to add whatever else you may need. Yeah, so they call them extensions, right? <clears throat> so finding so using to building extensions, right? So that's what you have to do uh, for uh, Flask, right? Uh, but, you know, Django comes almost complete, right? Not complete, complete, but it's got, you can build a large scale website with Django without having to add much, right? With just the bare minimum, with whatever Django comes with, right? So that's how it differs, right? Um, and, and, and I'll show you as, as, as we go into the code. So that's that's the main difference <clears throat> between uh, a micro framework like like a Flask and you know a, the whole complete uh, framework like uh, like Django, right? And this is not an idea which is unique to Python, right? With um, in I think in is it Ruby? I think in Ruby, yeah, in Ruby you have Rails, right? Which is also you know you could compare it with uh, Django, and then you have something called Sumatra. Right, which is a micro framework for, for, for Ruby, right? So that you know you have some flexibility there, right? But you know, whether you want to build a monolith, you know, with it, which is more like Django, or you want to build a microservices, which is more like Flask, it really depends on on, on your, your your business case and, and, and what you want to do. Right? Cool. Um so now what so what I'd like us to do now is Unless there's, I'm not sure if there's any questions uh, in with regards to my explanation. Um, other, if there are not, then we can go into the code. Um, uh, I don't see any hands. Okay, so it means everyone is is okay. Uh, all right, cool. So maybe what I want, maybe you what you could do. Uh, is here. So this is this is my clone, right, of the Git repo, right. So I'm in it. I, I won't be using any of these things, right. Uh, but it's good uh, for reference, right. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So I won't be using any of that. All right. So uh, please let me know if you, you know if you can follow uh, with me. Uh, so maybe the other thing that I may want to add is that um, so Django does come with. Uh, you know, SQL light, uh, which is this SQL light, um, you know, sort of, you know, uh, as, as, as a default, right? As a default, okay, let me just, I think I should need to open this. Uh, okay. So you see here, you know, after, you know, doing some work, then, you know, you can create, uh, your, your database. You can, uh, yeah. Okay, so let's see. Um, so this is just site, and well, this is what after we've done everything, you know, what we're hoping to achieve. And um, I just want to show you. Where is it? Oh, I think it's here in models. Okay, so install apps. Okay. Like I was saying that, you know, you have, you know, <clears throat> all of these things, right? So in Flask, you know, you may have to like, you know, get these things from extensions, which, you know, doesn't come with, uh, with Flask. Uh, so here, so the templates, yeah, okay. So there we are. So you could your databases, right? So here, the, the, the default database that, you know, Django would be using would be SQLite, right? But you can extend this, right? You can have another uh, database that you can add, you know, Postgres, MySQL, uh, etc., right? As they are saying here, but you can have Postgres, MySQL, or even Oracle, right? Or any other database, right? And if it's not supported, you can you can just add it, <clears throat> right? But with these other ones, with SQLite, you know, the the support is already there. But with the other ones, you may have to like install. Uh, the sort of the database engine itself, uh, drivers, etc., whatever is, is needed so that Django can communicate with that database. But the idea of building 
you know, these models, right? So models would be, you know, like a, it, when you in, in, when you look at it from a database perspective, a model would be like a table, right? And then this would be, you know, all your different uh, fields in that table, right? So you could have, you know, models where you add all the different uh, tables. And so this is, and then now what Django will do is that uh, it will take, you know, this Python and then write the SQL for you. So you don't have to write the SQL, right? So Django will take this, this is your table, you've defined it in Python, <coughs> uh, you know, using the, the Django API, of course, and then it converts it into SQL, whether it's uh, TSQL or all the other uh, types of, of, of SQLs, depending on, on your database uh, engine or database management system, right, DBMS. Okay, cool. So now let's see. Um, so I believe everyone has Python already installed. Uh, so I think what you maybe want to do, if you have uh, cloned uh, this directory, right, then you can be inside this directory. Um, and then let's see, oh. maybe activate, <coughs> uh, activate your Anaconda, right? Because there may be other things that you need, uh, most like basic uh, Python things like PIP, etc. Right? So you activate that, but we'll be using this uh, like just you know as a as a backup environment, but we'll be creating our own uh, environment here. Yeah. All right. So okay. So maybe to make things clearer, uh, let's create create this tutorial, right? So that we have a clean um, environment, right? So what you want to do is run this, you know, this command. I can paste it on there. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks, Desmond. Um, so you can run this. So basically, what's happening here, right? Uh, if I can paste it here, basically what's happening. So there's this thing, um, this package called uh, it's a module called uh, VM. Uh, I think there's another one called virtual end. I'm not sure what the differences are, whether it's a name change, etc. Uh, but you can either use VN or virtual end, uh, right? And then here, when you say my end, right? So you're saying call this, um, you know, this module so that, you know, you create my, my own virtual environment, right? You can call it whatever you want. You can call it the end as well. Some people like to call, you know, you know, say dot env so that, you know, it's hidden. It's a hidden uh, directory, but really it's up to you. Uh, but so that things are easier uh, and, and easy to follow. I'm just going to call my uh, VM, my, my env. I think it's my env or my VM. It's my env, okay? Cool. So this, what, which, this will just create like a new uh, sort of Python installation just for your project, right? So if you see what's in there, right? Uh, you can see this is just a new Python environment that we've created, and and this is what it already has. And it's got pip and it's got Python, right? Very basic, right? Um, are people following? Let me know if you're following. So I'm gonna paste all the commands that I'm going to execute in um, in Google Meet. So you can just copy and paste on your environment, uh, but also remember uh, that you should have cloned. Well, you don't have to, but just create. Uh, you know, a, a new clean uh, folder so that you know you can differentiate the files. All right. Uh, are people with me so far? You can type in the command if, if, you, if you're struggling or if you're following. Okay, great, Michael. All right, perfect. Perfect. Okay, cool. So we have that. Right? So we have a new, um, you know, tutorial environment and inside the right inside this we just have our environment there's no no project files yet it's just the environment right cool now uh, the next thing you want to do after that is of course activate the environment right so activate the environment right. so let's activate that environment right okay so uh, yeah my end being activated, right? So basically we're just running this, right? Activate it. And you see that here, 
it's activated, right? I still have my base directory, uh, my base environment from Anaconda. But don't worry about it. But this is the one that's, that we actually need. Um, cool. Uh, so this is the environment that we've activated. So now we know that, you know, when we run things, uh, when you say Python, so if you say something like which Python, right? It will tell you that it's actually this current Python. It's no longer using the Conda Python, right? Uh, you remind me 5G. Uh, Geza Hegne, I'm not sure I'm following your question. Are you saying I'm, I'm moving too fast? Okay. Uh, sorry about that. I'll try to slow down. If Desmond, <clears throat> we can assist on the chat to, you know, to retype some of the, because other people are joining late. <coughs> And in Google Meets, when you join, like you don't see um, the chats that happened before, right? Uh, so if yeah, if you're having issues with that, then you can just uh, you know replace some of them. Uh, no, you don't, uh, Daisy. <clears throat> so I'm I'm using uh, Anaconda here. I'm activating it because I want to use Python there, right? Uh, so let's see if I do Conda. Activate. Okay, so it's been, been deactivated. But let me also say uh, deactivate this current environment. Uh, I think it's just deactivate. Deactivate. Okay. Uh, let's deactivate this one as well. Uh, what's going on? But I ran it. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Let's see. When I open a new one, if it's okay, <clears throat> it's not on my day. Okay, that's fine. Um, okay. So, okay. I'm just gonna make another tutorial folder. Okay. So if we switch into into that one. So basically, if I say Python, right? So we do. So you see here, it's it's Python two, which is on my system, right? But um, but the the Anaconda one is is Python three. It probably shouldn't matter, but I just just want to make sure that you know everything goes well. That's why I'm invoking. Uh, the Anaconda uh, Python because I have been using that as it works. So if I use the system Python, uh, you know I'm I'm not sure uh, what will happen because this is an older version of Python, uh, and I think other operating systems don't come with Python pre-installed, unlike uh, Ubuntu and maybe probably other Linux environments. So you don't have to. You only need you know to be able to run um, this command. So if I say, so if I say. Uh, what I did the VN, uh, my VN, you may find that Python 2 actually does it easy. It doesn't even know this. So you only need, uh, you know, VN, uh, Python, uh, Anaconda, just so that, you know, you can run Python 3, which comes uh, with this module. But after that, you know, you don't need it. Uh, I hope that explains it, uh, Daisy. Yeah, so basically, you, you are not, Conda, you are just using it to, to, to me to access the Python. Once you, you are in VN, then Conda is no longer, it's only going to be used as a backup. You, you've, like I was showing you here, if we go to this, uh, to activate. Okay. Uh, when we've activated that and I say which Python, right? It says, this is the Python that I'm using. Right. So I'm no longer using um, Conda. I'm only using Conda so that I can, you know, start up my VN. That's it. That's the only reason why I'm, why I'm using it. So it's, it's it's not both. It's just there's something that I need from Conda, and then I'm doing it. Once I'm done, then I don't need it anymore. Right. So I hope that makes sense. I'm, I just need Python three from which is installed in Conda. That's all. Uh, which has this actually. Okay, anybody else? Okay. 
Okay, I don't see any hands. Um, okay, so the, the commands that I'm executing, I'm pasting them. Uh, if you can just follow uh, with those commands. Uh, yeah. So now, so we have we've activated that environment, and as I say, it's, it's there. Now we need to install Django, right? Django doesn't come pre-installed, so we need to install it, right? With pip, of course, right? So, but we're installing it into this environment, <coughs> not to your whole system environment or your, um, what do you call it? Or your Anaconda environment. So there's a comment here. Yeah, you could you could specify uh, Python three there. Um, although once you are, if you've activated an Anaconda, then the default would be Python three. But yeah, you can say Python three. It, it's the same uh, thing. Uh, but yeah, if you have on your system, if you have Python three uh, already installed, then you don't even need to activate. If you if it's not installed via Anaconda, you don't even have to uh, activate Anaconda. So you can do it like that. Uh, we can run that as well. That should that should work fine. That should do the same thing, right? It should do the same thing. Okay. Cool. Now, so now we we need to install Django, right? And this is the command for that. Uh, just run that. Okay. Probably yeah. Probably should have copied all these commands uh, before and just put them in the in the document. Uh, maybe I'll do that later. All right. So here you just because you remember I was showing you here that the, there's a version three, right? Three dot zero of of, uh, of of Django, but the newest one is four point zero. But we want to use uh, three point zero, so we have to specify here yeah, that we are looking for this version, right? In whatever patches. So the star is, you know, if there's a patch, then it's fine. Right? So that's the one we're going to install. Okay. Once our environment is activated, so we install Django 3. These are very quick installs. Uh, even though Django has a lot of features, but it doesn't take long to install. Are people with me so far? You can just copy and paste. You don't need to type it out. Just copy and paste. It's the understanding that matters. Okay, so we've done that. It's done. Saying I can upgrade my PIP. I don't need to do that now. It's fine. Okay, so we have our Django installed. Now we can test that it's it's really is installed, right? You can open Python. Oops. You can open Python. Uh, here they're using because they're using the old uh, Python interpreter, right? Uh, you see Python. You open it like that. You know, you see my Python version is 3.9.7, uh, but I don't like this one. I like IPython. Ha, huh. it won't work because my Anaconda environment. It's fine, so we can just use, uh, just use this one, right? So IPython will come with my Anaconda environment. Right? If I say import Django, then there we are, right? Then it's in it shows that it's installed. Then we can check the version, right? So Django dot get version. So it should be uh, this one, yeah, 3.0.14, dot zero dot one four, which was whatever patches are there. Right? So that's just to test that our installation is successful, and it is, right? You can see that our installation is successful. Uh, just paste these two commands. Well, first, first you run you run Python, and then you do import Django, 
and then you will do jungle the good version. Right. You do that, and then it will tell you <coughs> which version of, of, of jungle you actually have, which is should be 3.0.14. Uh, Alright, cool. So here, well, they used dot four. It was a while ago, but now you know things have improved. All right? Are we together so far? We've got our Django uh, installed. Show of hands. Speak up, some someone. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Daisy. Okay, cool. Now we have that, that installed. What we want to do is we want to create our project, right? So Django has this, um, you know, called Django, um, this module called Django Admin, right? Uh, which, you know, helps you manage your Django project, right? It's got, you know, a few, let's just see, a few commands that it comes with. So if I do Django Admin, yeah, you see, you'll see that it's got a lot of things that, you know, I can do <clears throat> with my Django project, right? Um, yeah, so flash, load data, migrate, uh, run server, escape migrate, start app, start project, test them, right? Um, and the ones we're going to be using uh, the most, let's make migrations, migrate, run server, um, probably SQL migrate as well, start app, start project, right? Those are the main ones that we'll be using. But Django comes with a lot of functionality to help you manage your uh, your development, your, your, your Django project development, right? So now the one that we want to do here is we want to run, uh, I think, a start project. I'll tell you quite soon enough what the difference between a project and an app is. A project, and I think we're calling it my site. Just confirm. Can okay, I paste this on the chat as well? Just run that. Django admin. Okay. That was quick. Okay. We list. What do we have? So we have we have this directory which was created. It's got a a, a Python uh, file manage the pie and it's got another subdirectory called my site right so i think what i can do now is close all of this and open this in visual studio code right? <clears throat> so you can see what it looks like so i've got my my main directory which is tutorial I've got my environment right which i created using a vn and i've got you know my my project which i've started the name of the, my project is my site and the, there's a subdirect called my site as well, which you know in Django a technology that's called an app, right? So it's a project and it's an app or one app, right? Uh, cool. So okay, maybe I should, yeah. So let me show you. Okay, they explain it further down. Okay, so that's fine. Let's go step by step. Uh, but I'll explain a bit later visually what, what's the difference between an app and a project. So you can have multiple uh, apps as part of the same project, right? And as you can see here, you know, this is what, so if it, all of these things, init, an init file, ASCII, settings, URLs, whiskey, manage.py. Uh, actually, manage.py is part of the project, but all these other files are part of uh, my app, which is my site, right? And these are pre-populated um, by Django, right? So it gives you already a nice, uh, what they call a boilerplate code, right? In it is just to say, you know, treat my site as a, as a module so I can import it. So you can imagine if you have another, uh, you know, maybe maybe you have subdomains, maybe you have different parts of your site, right? Uh, with us, uh, for example, 10 Academy, you could probably uh, show you visually. So <coughs> you have uh, 10 academy.org, right? This could be one site, but then you also have 10x, 
tenacademy.com, right? So what you could do here is that tenacademy.org uh, would be my site here, and then you have another um, folder uh, here uh, called, uh, let's see, your site, for example, right? And then you have that. So that's still part of the same project, but then they, 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 they behave a little bit different, right? They just think slightly uh, different, right? So you could do that. So I'm using this as an example to say you could host uh, different parts of, 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 of your project. Uh, one would be different apps, right? So you can manage those things uh, better, right? Uh, so I guess, yeah. Um, so that's that. <clears throat> um, so yeah, so I was saying this is, um, you know, it allows you to treat my site as a project. And then ASCII, uh, this is a new, uh, relatively new feature. I think they introduced it in Django 3, which is uh, asynchronous server gateway interface, right? So before, uh, they, we had Whiskey, right? Which is, I think, uh, I think web server gate, gateway interface, right? So now they have this other one, which is called asynchronous server gateway interface. Um, and this is like, it's like a, a like your little uh, web server, right? Uh, that's running mostly for development purposes, right? If you want to deploy, you may want to use something like Nginx or Apache or et cetera, right? Uh, but this allows you to, uh, to like sort of do a local development uh, quite easily. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and what basically what it does is just, you know, it just gets your settings, basically sets your settings and then it creates a new application, right? So it's very simple, but this is the old way of doing it. The new way would be this asynchronous. So if you know uh, with React, uh, what they're doing these days is that, uh, so, okay, so the difference between this would be synchronous, this would be asynchronous, right? So basically you could, you know, uh, you know, execute code, but you don't have to wait for the result before you move on, right? So if you're on a website, you know, you could, you could, I don't know, execute something. Um, and then, you know, your project, could, your, your website could still run other things. And then, you know, later on, once it's done, uh, once it's done processing, what is asynchronous, once it's done processing, you know, you get regular results and then you can start using them instead of having to wait, right? I think they call it blocking IO, etc. right? So you don't have blocking uh, input output, right? You could just, you know, run something, you know, uh, and then uh, keep 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 going, and then once the results are ready, then then you get them back, right? So this is what this is, uh, yeah. And then your settings file, uh, yeah, it's really uh, you know what they call syntactic sugar, right? So you can see that uh, instead of uh, it's like it's like a file of of your variables, right? Basically, that's how your settings file. It just keeps all your variables, right? So you have base directory variable, secret key variable, debug, allowed hosts, yes, you know. So these are all the variables that you're using across your application, right? So it's easy to find them in one place instead of having, defining this where you're going to need them, right? You can, you, you, you can imagine you end up duplicating, uh, you end up, you know, with typos, etc. right? So basically your settings file, you know, there's the, uh, you know, typical things that you want to have for every Django uh, application. So Django will actually just create those ones for you. And then you can add on top of that as, as time goes. Right? So it creates all of these things for you, right? Uh, yeah. So that's it. Um, allowed host basically is just saying, you know, who can connect uh, to, you see, you know, we may have to uh, edit this a little bit, who can connect to to my app. Right, so you can imagine that you know maybe you are doing, you're building an internet site, right, uh, and you don't want people outside the company to connect. So you may you know not you know add uh, those uh, those hosts to connect to your app because you just want it to run uh, locally, uh, you know within your company for example, company's network, right? Um, yeah. So okay, installed apps like I was saying, you know admin. Uh, if we have time, you'll see the admin site uh, where basically, yeah, 
um, you can do a lot of things. You can actually create database entries uh, from the admin side. You can add users, uh, you know, etc. Right. So it's it's how you you know you manage uh, the data within your um, within your your project. Right. Uh, I, so this would be you know like admin would be like uh, you know like your Strapi, right, uh, where you are creating data uh, for for your, for your project. Right. And there's authentication. So which is already pre-built, uh, you know, content types, sessions, managing sessions, messages, um, you know, static files, et cetera, right? Uh, you will see some of those things as, as we go. And middleware, yeah, it's just internal things that, you know, Django is using to, uh, to implement certain things. Don't, don't worry too much about that. It's a bit advanced. And, you know, uh, URLs config, where to find URLs config. Uh, so I think Michael is, yes, Yesterday, when he was, he was asking you about endpoints, right? So this URLs uh, file, right, within Django, that's what con contains your endpoints, right? Uh, yeah, it's just, you know, for example, uh, with, uh, I'm going to go back to 10x again. So you see, so you have 10x.org uh, there, right? So if I click anything here, if I say apply for training, for example, Right. What does it it tells me, you know, now I'm in, you know, 10academy.org slash train, right? That's that's my endpoint. Right. So this is what URLs does exactly, right? It's got a you know a list of URLs. So you see here there's there's only one, you know, URL, which is admin slash that's already been created. And you know, this is how you access it. Ad admin site URLs, right? This is where it is. Um but you know, so you can imagine with us in our case, you know, if it would be something like, you know, admin there. Right? But you can imagine this is just one. And you can see this is this is the list, right? And you can add um you can add others, right? You can have uh, login, you could have <coughs> home, uh, you could have, you know. Contact us about us, etc. Right, and then you know <clears throat> this is where it's implemented. Right, they they, they call them views. Right, there's an yeah, a uh, model view controller uh, way of thinking about things where you separate the different loads. So this is where you, you know you have your view, which you actually implement uh, different things. Right, so um, that's basically you know what you find in URLs you know, all the URLs in your, for your, for your site, right? And, and this we've already uh, talked about, uh, yeah, even here, there's really not much difference except, you know, your application is calling a different uh, uh, part of, of, of Django, which is the asynchronous, and here it's calling the synchronous, right? So you can use, either use this one or you use that one, right? Uh, cool. Yeah, and then I was saying manage is just uh, a way to manage your uh, your whole uh, Django application, right? So if you remember, we executed this Django admin, right? So they say that, you know, manage.py is just, you know, like a local way. Actually, they say they, they advice that you don't change this file, right? It's just how to communicate with Django admin. So you can see, think of Django admin and manage.py as really uh, the same functionality. Right. Uh, are we together? So I should keep this open in case I need it soon. Are we together? Did our Django admin start project my site? Uh, execute nicely. Okay, great. So we have the same project structure, right? So the same project structure, my site, my site, and manage and a few files there. Cool. <clears throat> so what, what else do we do? Okay. So I've explained all of this. Okay. Uh, and then what you, you want, oops. Okay. So we are already, okay, let me see. Okay. So if you go into our project, my site, okay, I'm just gonna go into my site. So you see the into my site, paste it there. Right, which would be the the one the the the, the topmost one, the first one, right? 
you see the into that and then you run this uh you know this command python manage uh the py uh my address manage is same as Django ad, uh, admin uh migrate right so just to save time just copy and paste Oops. Okay, so then I will copy it. Copy that. Okay, so okay, maybe before I execute it, let's just see where we are, right? This is where we are. What do we see, right? Manage. Uh, my site. So if I paste this here, Python um, manage uh, the pi migrate, which I'm also going to send to you guys here. So you see it into my site, the topmost one. Uh, what it's going to do, right, it's just going to call this, uh, you know, this file here, right? So I'm going to call this file and then I'll execute migrate, right? Remember when we looked at Django admin, we have this migrate, right? Um, that's what it's doing, right? Uh, but what it, what does it do actually? What does migrating um, actually mean, right? Um, so, okay, so it's, look, I don't have any information here. So let's just execute it first. So you can see, <clears throat> okay. So apply all migrations, admin, Auth content type sessions, right? So you could see that at this point, uh, what Django is doing, it's creating like um, like my my database tables, you know, the essential ones that come with the uh, with the project, right? The, the uh, basically that's what that's what's doing. So if we had uh, uh, if we had what is it okay. We don't have it yet, uh, but you'll see when we actually have it. <clears throat> so we'd have a modules uh, file, basically where we, I, I think I did show you, um, let me just open it, okay, uh, open folder. So in here, uh, one. okay. my site the blog migrations okay so here you know it's just the initial it shows you that you know it took this model that we've defined and created a migration for it right which is executed all the sql as i was saying and now you can find this in your database when you go check right so you'll see that here uh, Okay, I closed the other one. Is that should be aiding, not opening? Okay. It's my tutorial edit. Okay, cool. So you have chapter one, my tutorial. <coughs> okay, cool. So uh, here, uh, you'll see that in in this blog, right? So you remember, you see that here, they actually have two apps, blog and my site. Right, so here you'll see that there's this this you know modules of pi where they've created different types of database tables, right? The you know published manager and post, right? So when you run this command, right, when you say Python uh, manage the pi migrate, basically it comes to this model's uh, you know uh, file and then it executes the SQL for it, creates databases where it needs to create uh, tables. Uh, and it also, you know, if you're deleting something, it'll do that, etc. Right? That's what uh, migrating uh, actually does. It just executes your uh, your, your models the pack, right? But here, in our case, right, because we're still here, we're still here. We don't have any of that, right? We don't have any of that. We don't have a models defined. So basically, it's totally doing the migrations that are already pre-specified within uh, Django itself, right? Cool. And that's why you see here, I don't think I can open this. <clears throat> Probably just, let's see. Okay, yeah, I can open it. Okay, it's not a, a bunch of nonsense, <clears throat> right? So you see, it's got, uh, 
Okay, those are certain records, right? You know, app name applied when the migration was applied. Um, what else? What else is interesting here? Auth user. Okay, so it's still empty because so we don't have. You know, we haven't created any users yet. Uh, auth group still empty, right? So these are internals uh, of Django that it creates for us. Creates like eleven tables for us already by default. Right, when you do that migrate, right? But once you add our models, then it also add those as well, right? But this is internal stuff that, you know, uh, Django will create for us because we need them, right? Basically, um, I'm not sure if there's questions so far. Everyone is run their, uh, you know, managed to pi migrate. Are you still okay so far? And it's putting it in SQL light three because uh, I think as it's settings, yes, in settings, you know, we've specified the default database as SQL light three, you know, so this is what we're using. So that's why it's creating this. So you can imagine if we, instead of this, we put Postgres, right? We probably have to change uh, this as well. And probably with, with Postgres, uh, you know, uh, because it's a production database, there may be other things that you may want to add. So SQLite allows you to do quick uh, development and it's called what's called an in monolith database, right? But you can have that default and then you can have Postgres there, you can have my SQL, you define all those things that you need, right? But for now, I'm just working with SQLite and this is the, the database that was created as, as you've seen, right? Cool. I hope people are following so far. I think I see we're almost out of time. Um, let me see what else. <clears throat> so we've done our initial migration, right? And you know, as you can see, zero zero one initial everything, right? Uh, in and okay, I think let's see. Uh, okay, so it hasn't created anything so far. I guess okay because this is internal. So if you see here uh, in my blog, when you do your migrations, there'll be a folder for your migrations and then there'll be a file, right? Uh, but for us, it hasn't created that uh, because I think we're, we're only doing the Django internal migrations. We don't have a, a modules of Pi file. Right. Um, so that's where we are so far. Um, okay, I think this is important. And uh, so now, you know, we have, a, we have a small site, right? It really doesn't do much so far, right? But let's see what it looks like, right? If you run that, I'm gonna paste it here as well. Okay, just run that and it will start up, you know, a small local environment, right? Here, that's why it's gonna start it up and voila, right? Uh, the install works successfully. Congratulations! Then, I mean, this is this is stock. Um, this is a stock uh, site which comes from Django, right? But we have the ability to change this right, when we create our own uh, HTML and CSS files, right? But this just shows you that <coughs> you know we have a you know a web server running here locally, and you are able to access it, right? So we have a small site that is running. Um, are there any questions? Yeah, so there is a lot <laughs> that you can do. Actually, this is a very uh, good book. Um, I'll see if you know this chapter can be shared. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll communicate with the with the author or the, the publishing company uh, for education purposes. Uh, normally, they allow you know. Uh, yeah, I remember that since you could print. You could make a copy of a textbook, uh, but like maybe not more than three chapters, if I remember, right? So probably it's the same here where you can you can distribute for learning purposes. Uh, SQL viewer, I think if you just look up um, SQL light, you should it should be able to pop up. Okay, so the book's name is Django Three by example. Uh, yeah, so this is the, I'm not sure if I can, can you upload things here, files? 
see. Probably not. Uh, but so this is the book's name uh, and the author. So I'm just going to copy that and say by the author is Antonio Mel. Mele. I think there's an uh, what do you call that thing? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I think there's an yeah. And what do you call that? It accentuates the E or something. I forget the, the term for it. But yeah. So that's the author. That's the name of the book. And you can buy it from parts here. Let me just paste this. Um, but yeah, I'll see if I can share the, the first chapter. I'll, I'll see if I can communicate with the publishers. Uh, but it is a great book. Uh, I I enjoy using it. It's probably one of the best uh, treatments of Django I've seen in a while. Um, yeah. So even but even this this site is actually very good. It's actually extremely good. Um, yeah. So you can use that as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it contains a lot of you know. Uh, you learn by coding, right? It's got a lot of use cases. So you, you build a blog application, which is what we're trying to do now. Uh, you and can enhance it with advanced features, see what those features are, you can extend it. Let me see if, uh, okay. I don't want it to open. I just want to see the contents. Um, yeah, so you can enhance it. So you can even build a social media website, you can share content on your website. You can track user actions. You can build an online shop, uh, managing payments and orders, extending your shop, building an e-learning platform, right? Which is what you know, 10x. Dot, uh, you know, 10 academy. Org is. So you could build a similar site, but with Django in, instead of React. Uh, and I mean, it's not, it's not either or, right? As you can see, this is back end stuff as well uh, with some with a little bit of front end. We can use both, uh, you know, React and Django. Uh, together, right? Or you could use, um, yeah, a, any other front end, uh, 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 you know, technology, uh, and use you know Django as a back end. Uh, so there's a lot of things that you, you could you could build from this book. You can learn a lot from this book uh, if you can if you can get your hands on it. Uh, but it, it is it comes if you subscribe to learning .com, it comes with a lot of a uh, lot of content. Yeah. So, uh, are there any other questions? Okay. Uh, Daisy has shared a, a Google Drive uh, folder uh, where she's saying there's there's other books there that you guys can use, right? Uh, and I, there's an error. Uh, I'm not sure why. Daisy, I can't open your link. But yeah, maybe you can share this uh, on Slack. And if there's issues with the link, then, you know, it can be fixed there. Yeah, but guys, you know, that's so far what we've done. But you can see it's running nicely. But this is not, you know, a, a web server, you know, that you can use. Because uh, it's we're using whiskey here. Uh, it's probably Gunicorn and, and whatever. But, you know, when you want to deploy, you, you might want to use other more advanced, um, you know, uh, web servers. Right, but this is nice to just you know uh, check. It's using you know its own uh, internal you know run server uh, implementation. I don't know what else it's using there, but uh, it's just for you to test. Uh, for deployment, you may want to use something else. Probably it also doesn't do load balancing and etc. Right. So if you have many users accessing your site, it can crash. So and maybe even security could be an issue here. Right. But this is for you to test. Um, yeah, so I hope um, that's a nice introduction so far. If you're able to get the rest, <coughs> hold of this, play around with the rest. Um, but I also advise you to use um, the, the the main, uh, you know, do, uh, documentation side. It's actually very good. Uh, and what they actually do when you're reading this book, they actually refer you a lot uh, to this site, right? They refer you a lot to this site for, for, more, for, for more information. So it's really good. Uh, if there's nothing else, uh, I think we can <clears throat> call it a day. Uh, is your hand is up. 
Um, yeah, I have one question. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. We can hear you. Okay, so maybe how does it all come together? Um, what combinations would you advise for, say, the back end and the front end and the API? Um, I think Django has everything, right? Um, I'd, I'd build a, a full blown site with Django, but I would change, of course, I'd change this, right? I would use uh, Nginx, maybe uh, even Apache, uh, right? As, as you know, so the, 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 the web server, it's what, you know, uh, what my, my web framework runs on top of, right? On my website, that's what controls the connections, etc. Uh, so I've used, you know, some more advanced, uh, you know, web server, which if they talk about it here, um, I'll use that. Um, that's one. And the other thing is for the bank, for the database, uh, here, right. Uh, I would use Postgres, uh, maybe even my SQL, um, but yeah, so yeah, I would do that. But also, you have to remember that you know some some of the databases may be good at certain things and not others. Uh, yeah, but if you are doing like a and you want you want a relational database, you know, Postgres is a good relational database. MySQL is a good uh, relational database, and they're open source. So you don't have to pay uh, anything. Um, but I actually love uh, Elasticsearch. <laughs> uh, so most of the things that I build, uh, I use Elasticsearch. Uh, so if you want a no SQL database, you know, you could use that as well. Uh, I love Elasticsearch. I think, you know, no SQL is, is the future because you can model things, tabular things in no SQL, right? It doesn't limit you. It's just the same structure, but you can model tables in, in, in a document or columnar database whatever it is right but uh you know for you for your question i think you'd be fine using apache or nginx uh for you for your server for your web server and you know for your database you'd be fine using my sql or postgres uh but for front end um yeah because here you know you probably we're going to use like vanilla javascript uh, which is like your normal JavaScript, uh, and we're going to use like you know HTML and CSS. There are you know better front end technologies out there, uh, which you know you can explore. Uh, I think I saw uh, one tutorial where um, well yeah previously I've used um, Knockout JS right, which you know was it's uh, it's actually it's a good one. Uh, Knockout so it's it follows. Knockout JS, it follows the same idea of microservices, right? It's a nice uh, front end, uh, uh, you know, so you can create buttons, etc. <clears throat> but when you when you compare it with Angular, so you see Angular JS comes with everything, right? Uh, so actually, Angular too, because uh, apparently there was a, a a rewrite, right? So, if, so now they call it Angular. Yeah. So this one, uh, it's a front end uh, tool. Uh, which, you know, sort of comes with everything, right? But Knockout, you know, strips the extra, uh, you know, features and just, you know, it's just a sort of a bare bones uh, type of environment, right? Uh, so, yeah, so I'll use, you know, Knockout, you just look it up. Uh, but I think probably like these days, React, these are old technologies. I think these days, React is leading the pack. Uh, but there's, there's also this. So JavaScript has a lot of uh, frameworks. That you can you can find, uh, but I haven't used this one. Uh, I still gonna play around with it. It's called Backbone JS. I've seen uh, some um, you know uh, examples, actually mostly with 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 uh, Django, where people are using Backbone JS with Django. So you can take a look at that as well uh, for your front end, because you maybe you want some you want dynamic rendering on your on your front end. You want maybe you know nicer visuals, uh, you know, a better um, look look and feel, um, you know, etc. Uh, so so yeah, so you can look up. There's a lot, uh, you know, but you know, backbone reacts, etc. Um, could could work. Yeah. Uh, does that answer you?
your question? Yes, it does. Okay, thank you. Is there any other question? Okay, I think that's it uh, for now. Uh, you can let me know, you know, uh, how you how you fare on 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 Slack when you play around with these tools. Uh, but I think uh, that is that's it for today. Uh, we can't, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a lot. Uh, this you know we can't go. It's a lot. But I was hoping that we you know we could do as much as possible here because there's still a lot uh, in this chapter. But you know, use the documentation uh, as well, and I'll, I'll, like I was saying, I'll, I'll find out if I can share one chapter from from this book. Thanks, guys. Cheers.